Um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, I'm today posting my first lecture in, in nutrition. Um, I already sent the PDFs to your emails and I hope that the, my, this presentation clarifies the PDF. So today we're going to talk about the relation between malnutrition and disability. Of course, both are very closely interrelated and they are both prominent public health concerns. They do have a bi-causal relationship, so we do find that malnutrition leads to disability, as we're going to see in the further slides, and the disability also leads to malnutrition. Countries with high levels of malnutrition also often report higher rates of disability and developmental delay. Also, disabilities can cause or contribute to malnutrition. So, this figure shows us that um, the nutrition and disability, they both interact together through all the phases of the life cycle, in the pregnant stage, in the infant stage, childhood, adolescence, as an adult and as an old age. All elements of nutrition concerning the micronutrients, the macronutrients, and the antinutrients, the deficiency of each of them can lead to disability, as we're going to clarify. And also disability causes an increase in the nutrient needs, so there is an increase in the demand. Also, there is an increase in the loss of the nutrients and a decrease in the nutrient intake. All three factors lead to malnutrition, as we're going to clarify as well. So, malnutrition in its broad term includes both undernutrition and overnutrition. Undernutrition is further classified into acute malnutrition and chronic malnutrition. Acute malnutrition leads to wasting and or nutritional edema. And of course, you've been uh, exposed to this marasmus and quasher core with Dr. Rehab. Chronic malnutrition, the stunting, and the micronutrient deficiencies and intratrine growth restriction all represent forms of undernutrition. Overnutrition, whether overweight and obesity, and of course, this is determined by the body mass index. However, in many developing countries, under- and overnutrition sometimes occur simultaneously. So, in our country, as an example, we find both. This phenomenon is referred to as the double burden of malnutrition. So, what is undernutrition? Undernutrition occurs when there is insufficient nutrient intake and or an increase in the nutrient needs that prevents effective utilization of the nutrients or, in other words, in the absorption of the nutrients. Nutritional requirements are, of course, defined by macronutrients, as we all know, the carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, and these are needed in large amounts, and the micronutrients, which are needed in much smaller amounts and include the minerals. Examples of micronutrient deficiencies that we all know is iron deficiency that leads to iron deficiency anemia. Vitamin C deficiency leads to scurvy. Vitamin A deficiency leads to eye problems like dryness in salmia and other findings like the pitot spots up to blindness. Niacin or vitamin B3 deficiency leads to pellagra. Iodine deficiency leads to goiter and cretinism, in, in, especially in infants born to iodine deficient mothers. Thiamine or B1 deficiency leads to beriberi. Riboflavin leads to riboflavinosis, which we have. Um, the angular stomatitis is very um, characteristic to that. Vitamin D deficiency leads to rickets. Let's have a close look on the map. Looking on our continent Africa and then getting a closer look on our country Egypt, we'll, found that the, we'll find, unfortunately, that the percentage of stenting in children under five years old is 30%. And this is according to the DHS survey done from 2003 to 2009. And according to the UNICEF 2013, we found that 165 million under fives are believed to be stunted or chronically malnourished, and that more than 100 million are considered underweight. 
Insufficient food or a poorly balanced diet short of certain vitamins and minerals, like iodine, for example, can lead to hypothyroidism and cretinism and leaves the burden of a mental handicap all through his life. The deficiency of vitamin A, for example, may lead to thyrosalvia and consequent blindness, which may lead to definitely a disability of blindness. Um, iron deficiency may lead to intellectual problems and may contribute to the problems we see among uh, children with learning difficulties. So as DINK. So we find that sometimes a lot of deficiencies may lead to physical, sensory and intellectual disabilities. Between 250,000 to 500,000 children are considered to be at risk of becoming blind each year from vitamin A deficiency which is easily prevented by oral supplementation costing just a few cents among children. And as you all know, we do supplement our children in, in centers of the um, uh, vaccinating centers at the age of nine months and at, at the age of 18 months. We give them two doses of vitamin A. For a similarly minute amount, salt iodization remains the most cost-effective way of delivering iodine and preventing cognitive damage in children in iodine deficient areas. Of course, malnutrition can happen all through the life cycle and the earliest effects being most happening among the, the mother while pregnant. It can affect the development of the fetus causing intrauterine growth delay and increasing the risk of infant developing mal uh, impairments. And let's take a good example of that. The, the micronutrient deficiencies of folic acid, for example, may lead to what we can see in the picture, which is neural tube defects, spina bifida. Sometimes it can cause other, nutri uh, other defects like anencephaly. And of course, as you know, uh, as, you, as you all know, just fortification with folic acid, whether from dietary resources or even a supplement, can prevent such a, such a handicap. So what are the foods high in folic acid? Dark leafy greens and broccoli, grapefruit, orange, papaya, strawberries, carrots, celery, avocado, and beets, all pulses, they are all rich in folic acid. Vitamin D and calcium are other micronutrients that are implicated in disability. So as you all know, vitamin D we every day almost every day, we have a, a, a new paper um, reporting the importance of vitamin D and its correlated correlation of deficiency with disorders like everything, um, Alzheimer's, autism, developmental delay. Deficiency of either during pregnancy is a risk factor for preterm birth and causes long-term numerous complications and an adverse long-term sequel, including CP, cognitive, visual, and hearing impairments. And again, what are the foods that are high in vitamin D? Of course, the fish, egg yolk, meat, fortified beverages, cereals, and milk. Iodine deficiency is another problem, which is global. And of course, you all know that it causes impaired cognitive development. That the problem is being most severe if the deficit occurs during early pregnancy. Deficiency leads to hyperthyroidism and cretinism. You know, you all know that they have characteristic faces and they have problems in intellectual and cognitive if they are not supplemented early with aroxin. What are the foods rich in iodine? Codfish, dried seaweed, yogurt, baked potato, eggs, tunas, turkeys, cranberries, and strawberry. As you all know, iron deficiency, according to the WHO, is common among 25% of the whole population, of the whole world population. It can affect brain structure and function, leading to both cognitive and behavioral impairments. When they worked on animal models, they found that, they, they found that the timing of the deficit matters, so that prenatal iron deprivation affects activity and impulsivity, while Postnatal deprivation impairs emotional and cognitive development. The risk of iron-associated disability, unfortunately, might not revert completely to a normal level even after supplementation. 
So infants with iron deficiency anemia are developmentally at risk in the short term and continue to be so in the long term despite the iron therapy. What are the iron-rich foods? Of course, you know that the types of iron-rich food, heme and non-heme iron. The heme iron found in all animal resources like chicken, liver, pork, beef and eggs. And the non-heme iron in the broccoli, dried beans, potatoes, spinach, iron fortified A combination of maternal macro and micronutrient malnutrition is associated with physical, neurological and cognitive disabilities. Suboptimal pelvic broth in girls is one outcome of poor early nutrition. So if we have a short mother, she's more at risk of cephalopelvic disproportion and accordingly obstructed labor that leads to fetal injury and birth asphyxia and both are major causes of CP as you all know. Maternal B12 deficiency commonly caused by untreated pernicious anemia or a strict vegan diet with consequently low levels in breast milk can lead to developmental delay in your cognitive impairment. And you all know that vitamin B12 is only present in animal resources like milk, eggs, octopus, chicken, sardines, salmon, and beef. They are not, they are not, this, it's not found at all in. Several of the B vitamins are associated with disabling condition. Vitamin B1 deficiency manifests as beriberi symptoms of which include a lower extremity polyneuropathy. Vitamin B3 or niacin deficiency manifests as pellagra, and this includes neurological effects like confusion and agitation. Vitamin B6, although rare, but is a well-recognized cause of intractable epilepsy or that epilepsy not responding to medications. Annually, we have around 250,000 to 500,000 children who become blind as a result of vitamin A deficiency, according to the WHO. The vitamin A resources are found in liver, fish, carrot juice, cheese, sweet potatoes, and squash. Zinc deficiency in children and adults can have disastrous consequences because zinc has a lot of impact on various physiological processes of the human body. Apart from skin lesions, they also suffer from mental apathy, hair loss, and diarrhea, a condition called acrodermatitis and geopathica. Zinc is found in oysters, chicken, cheddar cheese, cashews, and watermelon, almonds, milk, red meat, cocoa. Childhood micronutrient malnutrition often manifests as underweight or wasting and also impairs the immune system function and renders a child that was more susceptible to infection. And of course, infections, and particularly meningitis, that can often happen in resource-poor settings, they are major causes of disability. Another manifestation of malnutrition is stunting, defined as a high for age that is below two standard deviations of the Hearing loss is another possible malnutrition-linked disability. Infants with malnut malnutrition are more likely to suffer hearing loss than infants who are, under, are not undernourished. And the risk of hearing loss is increased in infants with severe to profound malnutrition. And this is according to a study in, done by, um, pub, by Ali Sania and published in the British Journal of Nutrition in 2000. Obesity is associated with an increased risk of metabolic disease and stroke. Stroke being the third leading cause of disability adjusted life years, or DALIs, worldwide. Malnutrition and undernutrition older adults can also increase the likelihood of brief breaking bones and hip fracture, which can also lead to lead limited physical mobility. What are antinutrients? Antinutrients are foods that can affect individuals at any time, at any age, during times of food shortage, and we have a lot, mashallah, yani, children and adults eat unfamiliar foods, and they don't to know how to properly prepare them to make them safe for consumption. And thus the toxins in them can cause neurological damage if not removed. Cyanide in the bitter cassava, which is one known type of plants, is a best known example. And this can be normally removed by careful preparation, washing and drying, pounding and cooking. You know, in food shortages, sometimes we have to eat the plants directly 
by just picking them and eating them. And of course, this may lead to a lot of problems. Failure to do or to remove the, the, the cyanide in, the, in such plants may lead to permanent peripheral neuropathy. Another example is dyspastic pyroparesis, which can, lead, which can occur due to um, a type of toxin called beta-diaminopropionic acid. And this is found in common in the pea, um, in the pea if not um, yeah, you processed in the right way. How does disability lead to malnutrition? Disabilities place all individuals at particularly high risk of nutritional deficiencies, like CP. As you, also, you, you all know, the cerebral palsy patients may have uh, problems with how they feed themselves and even the swallowing process and sometimes the drooling of the saliva. Some craniofacial abnormalities like cleft lip or palate and many genetic syndromes as Down syndrome and Pierre Robin also have oral motor feeding problems and swallowing. Some children with disabilities may need additional nutrients to cope with the health problems associated with, it, with their disability. For example, a child with a physical disability that he cannot move, for example, he may be prone to pressure sores caused by immobility and poor nursing which can become seriously infected. So in that case, he needs a high quality diet, which consists of high protein in his diet for prompt healing and to control infection. Children with certain physical disabilities, they are less mobile, therefore they are at risk of becoming overweight. Other children with certain types of genetic disorders like SOTO syndrome or intellectual or mental health disabilities may have eating disorders, which place them at greater risk of becoming overweight. So my key message for today's lecture is that malnutrition and disability, they both have a bicausal relationship, as we've just seen. Thank you very much.